and actually for the next five, six, seven classes, all the material we're going to cover is directly related to the course project. So the first one that we're looking at tonight gets you a good intro in how to set up your software and how to set up the problem to solve in MATLAB or Polymath or Python. So what I encourage you to do is let's just pay careful attention. This always happens every year in March, is that people get extremely stressed with multiple projects and pretty much every one of the courses, you've got midterms probably this week and next week and some of your other courses, uh, lab reports to you, everything kind of gets really, really compressed here in March and early May. And you try to instruct to space it out as best you can, you've got the calendar and all instructors can spread out the courses a bit. However, pretty much all that does is it makes sure that you only have one thing due every day. Rather than what happened two, three years ago is that you we have three or four things to use per day. So we've, we've tried to space it out a bit, but it's really important that you do keep up to date with this project. Um, so what I encourage you to do is to try the following strategy, it may work for you, is when we cover this material in class tonight, go and apply it to the project right away. And the key is to build up your project day by day, or, or at least two or three times per week. Go to your project and build it up slowly, so that you don't have a two-day period just before the due date when you try to do all the work because then you're going to do poorly in the project. Um, let's take a look then at the strategy to solve these sorts of problems. And the strategy is the one we've seen before. And so the handout has space for you to write this in. We're going to expand the strategy and look at it in terms of a fairly complex example. Actually, the example that we're going to go through is a little bit more complicated than even in the project. So this gives you a good a good start from science class. So the first step in the strategy is to determine the reactor type. Now in many cases that's so obvious, especially if you're dealing with an existing process and it's clear what reactor you're using, um, but like you saw in the tutorial that you've just been working on in this assignment, figuring out what the reactor type is, is not always that apparent. But that's the first step, and then what you do is the second step is to write the design equations for that reactor for every species. So write the design equation for the reactor for every species. Okay, so that, by that I mean A, B, C, etc. So figure out how many species you have in the system, and we will write out that design equation for every single one of them. Then the third step is to write out the rate for all reactions. Okay, so step two Let's just add this here. Step two will give you N ODEs. Where N is your number of species. And step three will give you a complex rate expression. Let's take a look at step three then. When I say write up the rates for all reactions, what do we mean by that? Well, let's take a look at this notation I'll introduce here now. Rij is the rate for the ith reaction for the J species. So Rij is the rate for the ith reaction and for the J species. Let's just clarify a little bit of terminology here then. The number of reactions we have, so number of reactions, we'll use this notation, uh, we'll label our reactions in fact, one, two, three, for the ith reaction, and I'll consider that we always have Q reactions. So lowercase Q reactions. The number of species that we have is uh, 
um, one, two, up to the J species, and then so our generic species is species J up to N, lowercase n. So we'll have lowercase n species that are written up here, and Q is the number of reactions. So this is a generic plan, and what the whole of tonight's class is really applying that plan to the example that's on the sheet and then to your project, which would be your next step. So everyone's got this notation down. One, two, three, I, the i-th reaction up to Q, and then the species, we've got one, two, three, up to J species, all the way to the n species. So let me just give you an example of that. Rij, we would write, we're used to writing Rij then as a function of Ca, Cb, and then I said that my species gets counted as the counter for the species is J, so I go up to Cj, and then I go all the way up to C lowercase n. So the rate expression is a fairly complex reaction, uh, a fairly complex equation sometimes. Sometimes it's pretty straightforward, but sometimes it's pretty complex and it goes all the way up to the n species. So when I say write out the rates for all reactions, we will have the rate of species A in the first reaction, the rate of species B in the second in the in the first reaction, the rate of species C in the first reaction. So you're going to have a fair number of these Rij terms. You're going to have Q times N rates. Many of them are going to be zero, obviously. If the species doesn't participate in the reaction, then it's going to be a zero there for that rate. So then what we'll do is we'll write out the net rate. So we'll say R net. Uh, so Rj for the J species, the net rate for the J species is equal to the sum of Rij and we sum those from i equals 1 to q. So let me give you an example of that. So imagine we're dealing with species b. If I wanted the net rate of species b, I go and sum up all the rates for the b species, sorry, in all the reactions i, the ninth reaction, all the b species. And then I'll get the net rate of B, and that's what I then substitute into my design equation. So let's be clear on this. This is what we substitute into the design equation. Now, we're used to always just working with rate A, right? So we so commonly see RA, RA, RA. We've never really considered what the rates of the other species are. But we do have an expression that links the rates of reaction of species A to all the other species. So recall the generic equation where, um, let's say we had, Consider the generic reaction where we had A plus B going to C plus D. This plan that I've just written up on the board here for you requires that you need to know the rates for A, the rates for B, the rates for C and D. Well, you can get those, once we know R and A, we can actually get the rates as well. So consider A plus B goes to C plus D. Then we've seen before that Ra over A minus A is equal to Rb over minus B, which is the rate for reaction C over plus C, which is the rate for species D over plus C over D. So that's our linking equation that links. Once we have Ra, I can get the rates for all the other species participating 
in the reaction through that linking equation of the metals. <coughs> now, this plan that I've just written up for you, the three-step plan, and then substituting in those net rates over there, is all you need to solve all these reactor design problems. There's only one extra feature that we need to be aware of, and that's for gas phase reactions, is that those concentrations in the rate expression, we need to express those in terms of temperature and pressure and flows instead, as we've seen before. So let's just add an extra smaller sub-step here. So for gas phase reactions, let's note then that Cj for the J species is equal to CTO, the total number, the total concentration at the inlet, multiplied by the flow rate of that jade species, the total flow, divided, multiplied by P over P0, multiplied by T0 over T. Also for gas phase reactions, we studied the systems when there's pressure drop. So for gas phase reactions, if there's no pressure drop, this is all you use. But if there's pressure drop as well, or well, sorry, I should say this, this equation applies whether there's pressure drop or not. Okay, so if there's no pressure drop, this term P over P naught is 1. If it's isothermal, T0 is the same as T. So those, this equation is the most general equation. Everything else just sometimes simplifies from that. But for gas phase reactions, we also have to take into account the pressure drop, and that adds one extra ODE to the system. So for gas phase reactions, let's say with pressure drop, there's an extra ODE. And we derived that from the Ergen equation last time. And that's dy by dw is equal to minus alpha over 2y to flow total divided by ft0 and then t times t0, t over t0. So there's there's always at least n ODEs, one for every species. But then if there's pressure drop in a packed bed, we have one extra ODE to come with that. So dy by dw is equal to minus alpha over 2y, total flow divided by mt0 multiplied by t over t0. And flow total is equal to the sum of all the individual flows, so Fj. So J is equal to 1 up to N. Okay, so that's the most general plan. And it's, it's valid for any, any, any system. We're going to then spend the rest of tonight's class applying that to this, to this example that you have in front of you. So I'll just give you a minute to copy down the rest of this strategy that's written up here. Okay, so let's take a look at the example. This is a, uh, an example that's not worked out in Fogler. It is an example from Fogler in the exercises, but I thought to pick one that's not worked out so you get to see another example. So here we've got formaldehyde decomposing to formic acid. So formaldehyde in equation one over there, let's write that as species A, reacts with half an oxygen, species B, to form formic acid. So species C is my desired product. But A also, participates in a second reaction, an undesired reaction. So that second reaction there is methyl formate being formed, that's D. So two moles of A decomposes over to methyl formate, or rearranges itself to methyl formate, I should say. So that's a competing reaction which we don't want to occur. 
the third reaction then, we have our product formic acid. That's our desired species C. Unfortunately, also decomposes over to carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and steam. So E plus W over there. That's through the third reaction. And then my final reaction is D plus W. So this undesired methyl formate meets up with the steam molecule and fortuitously creates our desired product again. So even though D is undesired, it can be reformed back into formic acid, our species C, okay? plus one mole then of G. So that's the four reactions we've got competing for each other in the packed bed reactor. And we've given there that FA0 and FB0 are fed in a stoichiometric ratio. So one mole of formaldehyde and half a, half a mole then of, the, of, of oxygen. So we're providing a feed in a correct ratio. We've given the flow rates, Q0, we're given that we've got a thousand kilograms of catalyst available to us, W. We don't have to use it all. And then we've given a total molar concentration of one mole per liter. And then the flow rate constant. So I, what I'd like you to do is follow that plan and I want you to write out the rates for the first reaction. The first, sorry, I should say the rates for the first species, so CA. So A, let's take a look then, is involved in the first reaction and it's involved in the second reaction. So it's being consumed by both the first reaction and the second reaction. Let's take a look then together, actually let's do the first one or two together and then I'll let you do species C, which is the desired product on your own. Simply write out in the software, so R1B is equal to 0.5 R1A. Okay. Let the software do the substitution. Don't, don't try to sub in yourself. Okay, this is the biggest problem we see in reactor design is that people get these huge, huge equation systems. Most of the equations are just duplicates of the other. The problem is if you type that first one wrong and you go and copy and paste, 
and you don't discover it right away, you're going to have to figure out every place you use that expression and go fix up your mess. This way, I write it once. If I get it wrong, I've got one place to fix it up and everything else gets propagated out. What's the rate of formation of species C in reaction one? This one's trivial. The same? Very, very. The same? No, it's good. Yeah, that's So it's equal to minus R1A. Yeah. Right? That's how you would write it in the software. Write it as minus R1A, so if it does the it will create a positive sign for you. Okay, so we've taken care of reaction one and we've got the three species involved. R1D is equal to R1E is equal to R1G is equal to R1W is equal to zero. You don't have to write that, but I'm just emphasizing it at least for this first example. Okay, let's take a look then at the second reaction that's occurring. <clears throat> this one's a simple reaction. We've got 2A going to D. So reaction 2 is 2A goes to D. Again, it's an elementary reaction. So R1A, the rate of formation of A, is equal to R2A. is equal to minus K2 CA squared. Okay. And then R2D is equal to... Negative R2A? Ah. Uh, <laughs> 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 Don't guess, let's not guess. So RD over 1 is equal to Ra over minus 2. So Rd is equal to minus 0.5 Ra. Okay. R2A. Uh, R2A. Okay. Okay, so, so let's, let's not guess. It's tempting. You might think intuitively I know what's going on here, but it's, sometimes it's, it's better just to work through every single one. Okay. Work through reaction 3. By the salts, reaction three and four. <coughs> you can work with the person next to you, one can do three, you have four, and then just exchange answers or talk about it.
R3C, the third reaction for species C. And C, C. Okay. R3E, negative R3C, negative R3C, and then R3W is the same. Okay, reaction four. Other and then link these to a very messy polymath file. Let's take a look then at putting this in polymath. We've got our rates written up here. Now we simply substitute our rates into the design equation. Um, so maybe before we get to polymath, the design equation for PFR, let's just recall what that is. It's, in terms of flows, it's dfj by dw is equal to rj net. Okay, so it's the net rate on the right hand side, and on the left hand side is the derivative of flow for species J, the molar flow, with respect to the catalyst weight coordinate. Okay, so remember we said Rj net is simply equal to the sum of the individual rates. So it's, I had had it earlier, let me just. So if we go from I equals one. Let's space here. So it's the sigma or we the summation then from I equals one to Q for R I J. So simply add up your rates for the J species over all Q reactions. Okay, so let's take a look at that. In, in polymath, I'm going to write this, write it up in the order that I know all my information. So I, I put in my, my k's, my constants k up here. I put in ct0, fa0, fe0, and ft0 is the total flow then on the individual condition. So we just simply write the expressions as we were given them. Okay, here was that equation then for, for the concentrations. The concentrations, let me just put it back up here again. Concentrations we said Cj is equal to Ct0, the total inlet concentration, multiplied by Fj divided by Ft. And then we had P over P0 and T0 over T. Okay, so P over P0 is Y, the pressure drop ratio. I'll just leave that, I, I've coded it up here for now and I've set it equal to 1 because I'm considering the case right now where I have no pressure drop. So later on I will go take that equation away. But so for now I'm forcing y equals to 1. And I haven't added in the t0 over t because I'm considering the isothermal system right now. So here again, this is what Fogler, unfortunately, they go and substitute these concentrations right into these terms over here. Don't do that. Rather, just write your concentrations out here as six, seven separate new equations. And then when you write out your rates later on, it becomes so much easier. You don't have the uh, complicated mess propagated. The only reason actually why Fogler does that is because polymath is restricted to 40 equations, the education version. So they try to minimize the number of equations. I'd rather you do this in MATLAB then you don't have that restriction. So my advice to you is if you're still deciding between polygraph and MATLAB, go with MATLAB. It really is going to save you a lot of time. Polygraph will save you time initially, but MATLAB is going to save you time in the long run. <coughs> and I'll still post code for both, both options to your website as well. So okay, so just to continue on there, there's the concentrations defined. I've just written out this equation for J equals 1, 2, 3, 4, up to the final species W. So it's just written out seven times. The total flow 
That was the equation I had there earlier where I said Ft is the sum of Fj with j equals 1 to n. So we've got seven species, F, A, B, C, D, E, W, and G. So I'm just summing those seven flows. This is where I define my rates, R1A, R1B, R1C. So those are these three guys over here. Reaction two is defined over here. So minus K2, CA squared, minus R2A divided by two. Reaction three, so minus K3 times CC, minus R3C minus R3C. Let's just check the fourth equation, minus K4CW, CD, CW, and then W is R4D, R negative R4D, negative R4D. Okay, so you guys confirmed what I had here on that code now as well. So I simply write out those rates for each individual. So now let's come to my ODEs. DFA by DW is equal to the net rate. Well, the net rate is the sum of the rates for the J species in the I3 reaction. So let's go back to my reaction for the J species in the I3 reaction. I3 reaction here is, let's take reaction one. A, on, A participates in reaction one. So if we're calculating DFA by DW, this is the rate of flow change of A with respect to the catalyst weight, we need to take every reaction into account that A participates in. A participates in reaction one and reaction two. It does not participate in reaction three and four. So I don't have an R3A and an R4A, but I do have an R1A and an R2A because A is here in reaction one and it's here in reaction two. Does not appear then in reaction three and four. Reaction, let's take a look there at the ODE for species B. Which uh, reaction does B participate in? Just, just one, the, uh, the first equation. So I only need an R1B term. And then C is the most complex react, uh, species in terms of the number of reactions it participates in. So it, it's in the first reaction, the third reaction, and the fourth reaction. So I have an R1C, R3C, and R4C. So it actually looked like you guys are all looking here, like this is so mindless, I'm texting away, this is nothing here to concentrate on. That's fine, it's absolutely right. This looks simple, but if you go look at this example in Fogler, they make it far more complicated than it's needed to. I'd rather you break it out into these many small equations, and it's actually quite easy to debug them where you go wrong. The D species, species D, only participates in reaction two. So we have an R2D and an R4D. Okay, and then species D, species E only appears up here. So it's only created, it's not used up. No, so the question is, does it make a difference if it's created or, or, or not? Any thoughts on that? Does it make, make a difference that E is only created and not actually um, not consumed? It still has a rate. And the thing is that R3E, let's go back up to R3E to, to check that if it makes sense. So if it's only being created, R3E must be positive. So if we go up to R3E, it's the negative of R3C. So the negative of K3CC and CC is always a positive, K3 is a positive, so it's only going to get created. So it, it makes intuitive sense as well. Okay. R3W, let's look at species W, it only participates uh, water in the gas phase. Water only participates in the reactions three and four. So we have a R3W and an R4W. And then the final species is G, it's only created again out here, yeah. So it's only created the same species. Okay, so there's my initial and final conditions. I've used uh, zero to 500 kilograms of catalyst. Uh, then there was also the next part of the question asked to plot the yields and the selectivities. We don't need that just yet, so I'll comment that out. And then I can go ahead and run. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, so we're ready to go. 
29, equation 7 ODEs up here, and then when we run that, there's my, my, my curve. So A starts at 10 moles per second at the inlet condition, and then it includes. So I don't, with 500 kilograms of canvas, I haven't used up all my A. I start at 10 moles, and leaving at the end of my reactor, I've got about 70 moles, uh, 7 moles per second leaving. The interesting one is species C. Species C gets created over here in the first reaction, and then used up then in, in species uh, in reactions three, and gets created back actually in species in equation four. So let's just plot separately that one. We'll take the others off and just look at the C on its own. So we can see how it gets created and then it's starting to be used up again. Which if I integrate for slightly longer times, that becomes more apparent. So let's go down here to lengthen that up. And then just find it and we'll take a look at species C and D together. So they have uh, these profiles. Species C and D both get created and then used up again. So D gets created over here in equation 2. Reaction two, I should say, and then used up again in reaction four. So we, we see those expected shapes over there. So this is how you set up your course project. You should be able to go tonight and actually do it already. It's this, the course project reactions are simpler than this example. So there's really no, um, no difference. The only uh, interesting difference is that the course project has multiple, sorry, it has heat effects and pressure drops. So we haven't considered that. We will do that in the 